The Tesla Cybertruck is built different. Not only is this the most unique looking vehicle to have come along in decades, this is a revolution in the way that cars are manufactured on a factory production line. From the underbody to the exterior, the way that Tesla builds their Cybertruck is unlike anything you have seen before. Today we are going to look at the process of building a Cybertruck from the inside out. The core of the vehicle structure comes from Tesla's Giga casting process, while the vehicle's shell is the iconic stainless steel exoskeleton, and Tesla has included some interesting new parts in between that tie everything together. There are two primary Giga castings that form the underbody structure of the Cybertruck. These are similar in design to the die cast frame sections that Tesla introduced with the Model Y, only the Cybertruck components are obviously much larger. The Gigapress machine used to produce the Model Y uses 6,000 tons of clamping force. For Cybertruck, the new casting machines have been upgraded to 9,000 tons of force. We can see that the aluminum alloy Giga castings are providing structure around the wheel wells and forming the outer rails of the vehicle frame that run in the front to back direction. We can also see that the Giga castings are mostly hollow in between the wheel wells. There is very little material running from left to right that's handled by a totally different structural assembly. In between the two castings is the cabin structure. This is made up from pieces of stamped steel and it looks relatively similar to the way that Tesla builds their other unibody cars like the Model Y. These stampings are going to be a combination of conventional steel, high strength steel, and ultra high strength steel, and that's going to provide all of the rigidity around the door frames and keep the vehicle strong from the floor to the roof. We'll notice again that the cabin is mostly hollow on the inside with empty voids at the floor and roof, Again, that's handled by a totally different structural assembly. As far as we can tell, the Cybertruck production line is spread out over two floors, with lighter stamping operations happening on the upper floor, while heavier casting procedures are done on the lower floor. Tesla has special elevators that can lift the Cybertruck body up and down between the two levels. So these three main components, the front gigacast, the stamped cabin structure, and rear gigacast make up the basic internal skeleton of the Cybertruck. A lot of the initial hype around the Cybertruck suggested that it could be a purely exoskeleton design. When we think of an exoskeleton, we often picture an insect where all of the rigidity is on the outside shell and the inside is just a soft goo. But that's obviously not going to work for a vehicle. There needs to be some amount of internal structure here. So the Cybertruck is all about the dynamic that happens between the external skeleton and the internal skeleton. Both of them together create a level of rigidity that is unmatched in the vehicle world. The exoskeleton of the Cybertruck is formed from sheets of stainless steel. Tesla has not revealed the specifics of their proprietary alloy for this metal, we only know that it's a 300 series stainless steel that is cold rolled to somewhere between one and a half to two millimeters thick. Typically, stainless steels are given numeric codes like 302, 304, and 316, and these codes indicate the specific formula of metals in the alloy. All stainless steel is made from iron and carbon, but the ratio of carbon and the inclusion of additional elements like chromium and nickel will vary between different steel alloys. We know that 300 series stainless steel is generally corrosion resistant, strong, and easy to maintain, which is exactly what Tesla is claiming for their Cybertruck. The only downside of this material is that it is pretty difficult to shape. The steel can be bent, but it cannot be stamped, which means complex curves are impossible with this material, but simple curves can be done. Tesla has bent very slight curves into their stainless steel panels at the front end of the Cybertruck. The front lid has a slight curve to both the top plate and the front plate. This is likely done for two reasons, number one, aerodynamics, and number two, strength. When they put that slight bend into the steel, they add tension, and that tension will prevent the metal from collapsing inwards under stress from weight or impact. Tesla has also incorporated some shallow angle bends into the longer side panels and door shells of the Cybertruck. This is another way to add extra strength and rigidity to the metal. 
Now, as strong as a sheet of steel might be, it still needs to be mounted onto a frame in order to be truly rigid. This is where Tesla has developed some interesting structures to bolster their steel exoskeleton. We can see this on the underside of the front lid and the inside of the doors. The steel sheet is backed by a stamped aluminum structure that provides the much needed rigidity. We also see this inside the walls of the truck bed. In addition to the rear Giga casting, Tesla has included small secondary castings. There's one that ties the top of the wheel well to the top corner of the cabin structure, and another interesting looking casting that runs vertical at the rear corner of the truck bed. These casted structures are providing the extra rigidity that the exoskeleton can't manage on its own, but at the same time, these castings alone would not have enough strength to hold the truck together without the exoskeleton on top. So it's all about balance here and the interplay between the two structures. The only mystery that remains is just how Tesla is mounting the stainless steel onto the aluminum frames. Fusing two unlike metals is always going to be problematic. It's not impossible to weld stainless steel to aluminum, but it is very difficult. Since we can see that the exterior shell of the Cybertruck is perfectly smooth and unfinished, with no holes or blemishes, there are obviously no fasteners or welds going directly into those exterior panels, so Tesla has some invisible method of connecting the outside of the truck to the inside, likely a complex system of mounting brackets and mechanical fasteners like rivets. How do we accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy? We know that a better future for everyone is not a guarantee, it's going to require action, and more specifically, it's going to require money. Fossil fuel organizations have trillions of dollars on their side, and on our side, we have Climatize. Climatize is a platform that makes it easy for you to invest in solar energy projects across the United States while potentially earning up to a 10% annual return. Climatize does this by identifying solar projects that are in need of capital funding. Climatize has an extensive network of solar installers and developers who are adding new projects to the platform every month. This makes solar projects available to investors across the nation. Investors on the Climatize platform have already committed over $1.5 million in funding for solar energy projects in 2023. This crowdfunding style model doesn't require you to put in a massive amount of money. You can start investing in sustainable energy for as little as $10. And best of all, there are zero investor fees attached. If you are interested in learning more, Click the link below or go to climatize.earth slash tesla space to get started today. Of course, I am not a financial advisor or an expert of any kind. I just explain stuff and let you draw your own conclusions. So you should probably consult a professional before making any significant financial decisions. One of the more interesting things that we noticed on the Cybertruck production line is how Tesla is building out the front and rear sub-assemblies as these kind of self-contained units. It's reminiscent of the unboxed manufacturing process that was shown at Investor Day, where different chunks of the vehicle are constructed separately, in parallel, and then brought together at the end. These subframe assemblies are built on what appears to be an aluminum casting. It's colored black that could be paint, powder coating, or even anodizing, but it's likely done for corrosion resistance. This subframe is loaded up with all of the critical drivetrain components. The drive unit assembly, axles, and brakes, the steering actuators, each wheel now has its own electric motor, the shock tower mounts for the suspension are also preloaded onto these, and all of the wiring for both the high voltage and low voltage systems is complete, so it only needs to be clipped into the main harness. We know that Tesla is using a brand new electric motor system on the Cybertruck that combines permanent magnet induction power. It's actually most similar to the Tesla Semi. The Cyberbeast has one permanent magnet engine in the front and two induction in the rear, and just like the Tesla Semi, this would allow the rear axle to be disengaged when cruising while the front motor pulls the vehicle. In the dual motor truck, the front motor is induction while the rear is the permanent magnet motor. Now, when the time comes, the subframe assemblies meet up with the internal skeleton and are lifted in from below. These are going to fill the hollow voids in the middle of the Giga castings. In parallel to the main assembly, Tesla is building out the structural battery pack for the Cybertruck. These are using 4680 cells manufactured in-house at Giga Texas, and as far as we can tell, this is the same construction as the first Model Y structural pack 
that we saw last year. And like the Model Y, Tesla is pre-building some of the vehicle interior right on top of the battery pack. In this case, it's much more simplified because the Cybertruck doesn't have carpet that needs to be laid down. We'll also notice that only the front seats are mounted to the battery. This is because the rear seats fold up for extra storage, so they need to be mounted to the back wall of the cabin structure. Just like the sub-assemblies, this structural pack and interior are going to link up with the main skeleton of the Cybertruck and get bolted in from underneath to fill the void at the base of the cabin structure. Now, we can't count out the importance of glass in the Cybertruck construction. All Teslas use a lot of glass, but the Cybertruck takes that even further. The Cybertruck windshield is the single largest piece of automotive glass in the world. It is a special formula made in-house by Tesla for maximum strength and structure. They didn't let steel balls near the Cybertruck this time around, but we have seen plenty of people hucking baseballs at the windows, and it doesn't seem to do any harm. The windshield and the roof glass are actually providing a lot of the torsional strength in the roof of the Cybertruck, not that we would ever be too worried about a rollover in a Tesla. Along with fitting the large stainless steel panels to the front and rear quarters, this tops off the core exterior of the Cybertruck. The steel panels that make up the inside of the truck bed are pre-sprayed with a carbon composite bed liner before being brought in. In a bit more of the unboxed preview, the doors, front lid, and tailgate are all constructed separately in parallel. These are interesting components because they have multiple pieces and combine stainless steel outers with aluminum interiors. All that Tesla has really said is that the components are laser welded together. Once these are attached, we essentially have a finished Cybertruck. The final touches would be plastic parts for the wheel wells and bumper covers, plus the interior finishing and wiring. In theory, all of these processes together should yield a vehicle that is very quick and easy to manufacture. Now, we wait to see how this plays out in the real world.